all yearning for, we are all yearning yearning for knowledge uh, yearning for knowledge yearning for knowledge so that is why we we are very glad to have you in our midst you wonder why we decided to do this pre-induction why not wait for tomorrow experience has shown that most of the people that are with us this evening are either our fellows or doctoral fellow and it's always said that you should separate the boys from the men so that is why we are here this evening we want to thank you for being part of the journey with us i assure you you will have good time and whatever questions that you have whatever question that you have if you cannot treat it tonight we treat it in person tomorrow because tomorrow we have a long day and longer night some of us are just coming back from work this evening so thank you for being here you are not in the wrong place very right so let me quickly share my slides with you so that once you see the slide please just give me a th thumbs up okay and if you are hearing me give me double thumbs up okay so that is why what we are going to do what do we want to do this evening what do we want to talk about why are we here we want to talk about about developing executive presence why talk about executive presence anybody once once they hear that you are a fellow of this institute you are a doctoral fellow they just jump to conclusion that this person must have what it takes for us to put that person amongst the the who is who who is who so that is why we are talking about executive presence. Some of us just feel that, mm, why do I need it? What is it in the first place? Do I even understand what it is? Yes, we will get to see what it is all about today. Developing executive presence. You have uh, been told about my profile, but I want to quickly throw in something. And that is what? See that picture where I was shaking the hand of the immediate past vice president, uh, Professor Yomi Yoshiba Joji C-O-N. I have not washed her hands since that time. It was 2017. So take the anointing. For you to be here today, take the anointing and greater highs to all of us. So what we want to talk about this evening, that's what we call the agenda. Definition of executive presence. What is it about? What? Why do we need to talk about developing executive presence? The definition Okay, two, we we'll talk about for you to develop executive presence, you need to know yourself, know thyself. Then we we'll talk about the Joe Harry window. Then what is Joe Harry window? Then key steps to developing executive presence. Then what are the pillars of executive presence? Then traits of executive presence. Uh, then benefits of executive presence. Creating personal presence when you have been able to do this. So how do I now create it? How do I now, after creating, how do I develop on this? So create the environment and connect with people. People are very important in whatever we do. And that is why we're going to talk about people management. You wonder, and we finish this before 12 midnight. Yes, we will. And then how do we develop a new mindset? And we'll discuss if we still have time. If not, in the course of our discussion, you can type in your questions or jot them down against tomorrow morning by God's grace. I love this slide. I always love it because it gives us the, the bottom line of what we are doing as executives. Okay? And you are paid to produce results. Yes. But it is your people who produce the results. Yes, not only you. So focus your energy in helping those that will help you to be successful. So doing it, I can do it, I can do it, and Mr. Atlas and Mr. World and everything. Only you cannot achieve what we want you to achieve. So you need people, people management to get there. So what do you want to talk about? Understanding the individual. How do you understand the individual? You know, all of us are different types of people. And look at it. The coin has two sides. It depends on what you do to me that will make you to bring the bad side of me. Everybody has it. However, it depends on how you manage that negative side that will make people to know, yes, that is an executive. That is someone that has a presence. That is someone that can manage your 
or emotion. So let's quickly see. Human behavior is expected to be courteous, effective, and positive interaction between two or more people. So that what do we get? A mutually beneficial relationship. Relationship should not be one-sided. It should not be only me, he and I alone. No. So you need to understand that all of us are, are uh, we have different DNAs. DNA in terms of not DNA looking for who is the father of my child or no. But different, we are wired separately. So differences and degrees of pleasure or displeasure that we encounter will show that thing that I've always been wanting to hide. But if you just push me and I tip over the cliff, cliff what happens? You see the other side of me. So individuals are different. So this is a, a, a short exercise and I'm going to quickly tell us. So you type the answer immediately. I ask you the question. The first person will get something. I've not eaten dinner, so you can take that. How many faces can you see there? How many faces can you see there? Then the second one, start typing. What is that on the right-hand side? Eh? Homo sapiens, that is how many faces you can see. Can you see there? Then we have just two, one minute. Then people are like irregular figures. What is that irregular figure? What does it remind you of? The irregular figures. Your time starts now and it's moving. Your time starts now and we're counting. Let me see who has got the answer. Oh, oh, 56. Two face, two face EDB are very good. Two face, two face. Anybody again? Amiba, Olale Kwafolabi, thank you. I will send you my gift. Just Google, just go to ChatGPT. Google, I want a plate of rice with chicken, jollof rice, whatever rice you want. Just tell that I sent you and it will be delivered to your doorstep. Okay? Amiba, yes. One face, yes. One face. Two face, Idibia. Hmm. Nobody's close to that. So nobody should type Amoeba again. You got it. So let me see how many two faces. That's what I... Anybody, I can see somebody with three. Did I see three faces? Don't type Amoeba again, please. Three faces. Correct. All answers are correct. No. I said don't type Amoeba again. Concentrate on the Homo sapien. Okay. Nobody has got my answer. So let me quickly let the cat out of the bag. And that is four. Four. How do you see? See? The black, the white face is evolving into the black. See the nose here. Oh, sorry. See the nose. See the nose. See the nose. Then the black face is also evolving into the white face. Second nose. Then see the third nose. The black face evolving and moving out of the white into the white. Then under the black nose, under the black nose, you can see another nose trying to come in into the into the black. Imagine yourself trying to kiss your partner or your spouse. You so the mouth and the nose will go like that. So that is what we have: four faces, and that is what people, the impression people will have of you, perception that you are an executive, and they expect so much from you. So what is executive present? Presence is hard to define, but we know it when we see it. Someone walks into the room and people just turn, not because of the dress you are wearing, not because you are glamorous. They just feel that something is in you that you can contribute to what they're saying. So, and they just say, please join us. Come on over. Then you wonder that. And every time, most times that you go to places, you are spotted, spotted for good. Just say, oh, join us, join us. That is executive present. It's not that one that those of us that are in my generation, I'm still young though. Those of you that are in my generation, you remember that advert by Lever Brother, Joy Girl, that when she comes, everybody will just be throwing things all over. The no, executive present, you have an aura around yourself. There is a charisma. Don't let me not go into that. We'll talk about it. So conversation opens up to them, up, up, opens up to include them. They are in charge of themselves and in any situation. That reminds me when we were in primary school. In those days, our teachers would say, oh, there's going to put an impromptu, um, impromptu debate or impromptu something that you just talk. Hmm. 
And they will call some of us and say, me, say yes, you. They say, are you ready? Yes. You are going to talk about, to us about how to make a cup of tea. Ah. You know, they drink tea from our house, but uh, we drink, uh, we take a cam. So, anyhow, you just see that. I had now came up and started talking about making tea and everything. But some of us, when they call us like that, even as we are now, butterfly, we start jumping in our stomach. We start jumping. And you know, they say, ah, me, why? Then some of us, even executive, we now say, oh, my, my associate will speak on my behalf. No, there are some situations that you are boxed to a corner. You will have to say something. So they're in charge. So in any situation, every situation, as an executive, you should be able to be in charge, be on top. And that is part of what we are going to learn today. Those hidden traits in you that you can bring out and be able to stand when you talk, people will listen. So what is it? Why do you need it? How do I get it? How to get it, we will get in our presentation today. So executive presence is the ability. There are four things that I want you to, or three things I want you to get here. One, act decisively your decision whatever action you are doing must be mm, top notch two dignity okay not that you buga but dignity when you talk people say ah i want to take something away from here then the quintessential elements of leadership that means those small things that leaders need to show that they are ahead of the pack so three things Act decisively to dignity. Three elements, good elements of leadership. So those with executive presence, what do they do? Oh, when they are called to talk, what do they do? They can work under pressure. They communicate clearly and they have the confidence and capable persona. Now, when they are talking, people say, did you hear? I think I missed that. I think I missed that. So they'll be able to, they want to take the words out of your mouth. So presence is not something you are born with. So what do we do? You can develop it like skills, habits, and traits. And you can also drop some of those ones that are not working for you. It's not a matter of what, what you call status symbol. It's not that because I am the chief executive. i give you an example in that area. When we, I was still in service and still small, small officer like that, we were told that the story goes like this, that one of our big men, went out, but it just felt uh, maybe when I get there, I just flash my card, I flash my complimentary card and whatever. And we had this driver. He loves dressing very well. So even that time when they were not giving them uniform, we were tie would do done himself very well. So one day they went out together and he was ahead because the guy said, go and tell them this is so he got there. They said, Oh Oga, welcome to the driver. Oga, welcome. Whereas the guy himself was dressed not too smart as the driver. And the driver was shaking. That is my yoga coming, I'm not the yoga. So you see, when you have confidence, everything about you, anything around you radiates that which they expect of you. So what do you do? It is the X factor in you. And what is that X factor? The extra, the extra, the extraordinary that makes you to stand out. The X factor. Confidence, authenticity, and poise, and influence. These are some of the things that you need in order to develop your executive presence. Never, once you are going to be awarded the 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 the, 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 the fellow certificate tomorrow and doctoral fellow, please don't water it down. See, when you parade that, people want to see that which stands you out from others, not negatively, but positively. So good synonyms that we might use for personal presence is what leadership presence. So let me quickly digress a little that when you're going to talk about executive presence, it starts with what? Personal presence, okay? Leadership presence, then executive presence. It's like a triangle. The base is personal presence. The next level is leadership presence. That means you can't get to executive presence if you don't have that leadership traits in you. So the basic concept is that your demeanor, your action, leave the impression on others that, oh, that's a good person to follow. I'm sure most of us are following uh, the American uh, campaign. We see the table is turning, but if they don't do the 
America wonder, the woman should be ahead. But if they do the American wonder as usual, like the Africans, the man will go in. That is Trump or Kamala. So we need to know that people will say that is a true leader. It's not only by doing or saying, say, do as I say, but you also do it. So what do we need to talk about? Most importantly, it's a skill that you can drop some, you can pick up some, you can relearn and unlearn. So it is not a trait. It means that something you that you can calculate and be able to deal with. So it's very important that we need to know what executive present is all about. So know thyself. I said you can't get there if you still start with the personal present. So know thyself. We it said that those who don't know how to, to read and write or whatever are not the illiterate of this century. The illiterate of this century are those who are not willing to take up the challenge that there's something wrong and I need to understand it. So what do they need to do? They have to have the willingness to be, get there and at the same time understand what leadership style that they can start using to their benefit and the benefits of those around them. They now have to understand their emotional state. It's not that emotional intelligence says we should be MU, MU. If you have to blow your top, blow your top. But not when the chips are down. And I say, ah, it wasn't me that did that. No. So what you should do is that think of the consequence before you move on to behave the way you will normally would not have behaved. So what do you do? You have to now learn to understand yourself. Because if you don't learn to understand yourself, they, I think your people will say when they're saying lift, carry, drag, and it's behind your house, and you didn't people say, who are those? They will drop it there. So if you don't stand to own some of your your your, your character, your attributes, or whatever, they will dis define you in another way. So you need to know, the first thing you do is to understand others so that when you are doing whatever you are doing they also understand where you are coming from so let's look at these questions consider these important questions what kind of leader am i one who helps others to solve problems now when they come to my desk they say the box stops there if i don't get a solution there then there's no solution to this matter a leader who helps people get along how do others see me as a leader what are my goals, purposes, and expectations in working within a particular team? Team management is part of those elements, quintessential elements of a leader. So let's quickly look at Joe Harry window. He's still talking about knowing yourself. Joe Harry is a combination of abbreviation of two industrial psychologists, Joseph and Harry. So they came up with this model. Up there, you have self. You know, we said you should understand others, then know yourself so that they'll be able to define you and you'll be able to define yourself. So self and others, because you are going to work in teams, you're going to lead teams, you're going to direct people. So what do you do? So self. Under self up there, we have known and unknown. Under others too, we have known and unknown. So what do you want to do with this? There's, there are four, four boxes here. I wanted to say quadrangle. This, this is uh, this the diagram as a model. Uh, is quadrangle, but let's use boxes so that we don't, I don't like big English. The first box says open free area. The second box says blind area. The third box says hidden area. Then the fourth box says unknown area so the first box we say known and un unknown the second box we say unknown known third box will be known and unknown why the fourth box will be unknown and unknown so let's see i will give examples but those examples will make us to understand this better the first box that says known known that means I've been you have been giving my profile. Okay. You know that about me is an open free area, everything that not everything like that, but you need to know about me in the area of this, what we're talking about. Okay, who am I? Why should she talk to us? 
open area, free area in the public domain. Two, unknown to me, what is known about a person by others, but unknown to me. I'll give you an, a personal example. Some years back, I was in a group, I'm still in that group or that uh, association. One of our members just came to me, said, Mrs. B, do you know you are a calculator risk taker? I didn't. I looked, I said, I never knew that about myself. He said, but I'll be studying you. That means that part, I didn't know that about myself. But others have been watching me knew that I am a calculated risk taker. They know that. So maybe I've displayed some attributes or some characters that made them to say, ah, that woman should not jump if she does, if she does not weigh the pros and cons. But it was unknown to me. I was just doing whatever I was doing. So unknown to me, but known to others. So I need to know. Since that day, I started watching that aspect of me. And I now realize that I will not jump into anything without taking consideration of what will happen. Then the third one. What is known to me, but unknown to others? What is known to me that I can do if people are not looking? But unknown to others, everybody says, ah, Mrs. Gay is good. She's this. No, give her Put her in the midst of money, she will not touch it. Okay? But they will not know that I have that. So if you have a job for me, please don't. don't. I'm just giving an example. I'm not like that too. You know, if like, they now say, put her in the midst of money, she will not touch it. But they don't know that my own is uh, chop and chop, not work and chop. I will still take something first before I do the work and chop. So, what... They don't know about me is that. But me, I know that. Ah, put me there. I first of all take care of myself for, before I will do the job. So that means it's known to me. It's inside my belly. It's inside my head. Then, but people that want to give me the assignment do not know that about me. Then the fourth one, which is unknown to me, then unknown to others. Let's take this as an example. Let's assume all of us were in the place and there is fire and there is the perimeter fence is over six feet. When they say, hey, fire, 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 fire. And at my age, before they say, Fafa, Mrs. Igbe has killed the fence. She's on the other side. By the time all of us managed to escape, and they say, ah, uh -uh. we didn't know you could do that. I said, honestly, I didn't know that I could do that. But this is a matter of what survival. So it's unknown to me that I did not know that I could scale that fence. They did not know. They already said, ah, Mrs. Ibe cannot go on. To... Before they knew, I was even on the other side. So you need to know yourself. You need to manage yourself in order to say, I have the leadership trait. I have what it takes to lead people. I have what it takes to be in the C-suite. So, leadership. Leadership is a topic that we cannot but talk about. Leadership is always evolving since management started and we cannot stop talking about it. Everywhere, anywhere, when you talk about leadership, it's always new. It's always new. Something new will always come up. So, but somewhere along the line in the in this uh, 28th millennium, people have started saying that, hmm, good leaders today appear to be endangered species. Are we? I'm a good leader, but I'm not endangered. Why? Because I'm grooming some people. Say it the way you want them to do it and you should also say it, do it as well. So this is why leadership topic is always hot. Hot kick anywhere. So endangered species. Does it mean that in the Gen Zs or the bo baby boomers that are facing out or gradually facing out of the uh, of the workplace, are they the endangered species that they are not leaving anything for people to carry on? Remember, as an executive and as a leader, the office will outlive the worker. So remember, you need to leave something for them to when you exit. Okay, so this is basically what leadership is about. How to, why to, why are we doing this and what to. Of leadership, so that you'll be able to say, How are we doing to do it? Why are we doing it? And what do we need to do to for our ability to manage the C 
sweet. We need to know some of these things. And uh, my own simple way of talking about strategy is that use the six Ws and the H. You'll be able to arrive without going into blue ocean, white ocean, red ocean, and all those. Just think, what do I need to do? How am I going to do it? Why should we do it? How are we going to do it? All these six Ws, when are we going to do it? We create a pathway into how your strategy will be uh, uh, written and how you are going to manage it. How many people are we going to use? When are we going to deliver? It will give you the timeline and everything. Simple. Once you're able to answer those questions, you'll be able to get your strategy in place. That is my simple way. And it helped me in the course of my job. So we are still talking about leadership. Remember when you have the doctoral fellow and you certificate and you have the, the fellow certificate, people expect so much from you. But remember, not everybody is born a leader. Apart from those who, in those days, when they said the, the, those who do divination, they say, ah, that child is destined for greatness. But when the child is brought forth into the world, they say, hey, here comes a leader. No, even those who are in the royal family, it's not all of them that are leaders. They are human beings. Even if they say they have blue blood, the rich people have blue blood. It's the same blood that runs in yours and mine that runs in theirs. So we need to know what do you do. So that means leadership can be learned. It is a skill that we can learn from. You can learn everything about leadership in one day. You have to take it bits and pieces. So, but everyone can develop the leadership skills and everyone can benefit from using them. So, if you want to be a successful leader, what do you do? Develop executive presence. See all these people, all these pictures that I have there. You have Mother Teresa, you have my cousin, you have my grand uncle, you have my great grand cousin there. So, if you inspire people, if your action inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. You are a leader. That was said by Quincy Adams. We need to know that one thing that we have to do is that as you move on in life, and as we are going to get that doctoral fellow tomorrow, as well as our fellow, please remember, you need to define who you are. How will people see you? How would you relate with people? What type of behavior do, do they expect you to show? when you are leading others. So behaviors that can develop, define executive presence. You should be a top-notch emotional intelligence, not guru in terms of knowing, but I wouldn't want anybody to get under my skin unless I allow them. I can blow my top. That doesn't mean I, I am I, 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 I'm not emotionally intelligent. Blow your top, but know the limit. Know your boundary. So that I say, that's what she should they do. That's how she is. Nobody wants to work with you. No. Then, emotional intelligence does not say we should be MU, MU. Express yourself. Let me give you an example of emotional intelligence. The story goes like this. One man, he was in his big SUV, all those big uh, legs, uh, all those big, big cars. So he went to the filling station. He decided to drive himself that day. He didn't want his driver to drive him. So he got he was coming back from himself. Hmm. Not now that there's fuel scarcity. Just let me stop it by to buy fuel into this car. So we got to the filling station. The it was served, and as he was about to move out, this downpour just came, <laughs> blocked him. We just say, my friend, what do you think you are doing? Do you know who I am? You know Nigeria. Do you know who I am? The guy said, before I wanted to talk, and he was in his tire and everything. The downpour driver conductor came and said, "Oh God, na ma oh God, you they talk to like that too." When he saw the guy's chest, and you know that for drivers, they don't wear, but I think nowadays they wear, in those days, they never had cloth. They would just wear singlet. If it is torn, they stop at Ojota and buy another singlet. Okay? Maybe by the, at the end of the day, they may just finish with that one, but at least within the week, they will probably have, be able to buy two pieces of singlet because they wear it and anytime there is fight, they will 
the red ring. So emotional intelligence. So what did the guy in this SUV or the big car did? What did he do? He just reversed his car and said, next time, just be careful. Because he knew that if they use his time to drag him, <laughs> or for all for fight, he will be the one to be put to shame. So what did he do? He just reversed his car. He said, be careful. He just moved on. And everybody started laughing. That. That's somebody with good emotional intelligence, managing his emotional intelligence. Public speaking is something that we need to develop as an executive. When the lot falls on you to talk somewhere, would you, say, uh, you see, uh, actually, I have one, one stuff like that. Before you say anything, you say, actually, no. When I was growing up, I wasn't, not that I wasn't good at public speaking, I was shy. But something happened and my mother drew my ear. I never knew that I'll be talking to people and I'll be uh, in front of hundreds of people or whatever, even physical, I'll be talking. But my mother said, you need to step up. And it helped me because I just had to turn around and that was it. Public speaking is something that you should start with some people. Manage it and you will get there. When the butterflies start flying in your stomach, you know, I went, let me give you this for free. When I went for one conference outside of the country, self-sponsored, then I asked that most of my participants are always shy or they just feel that there's butterfly in their stomach. And people will say, hold the glass of water. Uh, they, they, everybody, once you sip, you know that the person is fretful. So what do you do? The, the answer I got then was that the facilitator said, you know what you tell them? Let them close their eyes. You're not necessarily close. Let them imagine something in the past that made them happy. The happiest moment that they can remember. And that will trigger them. See, that time, I was like a lion. And I conquered my environment. Is it the time that you got married? Is it the time you had your first child? Is it something? Put yourself back in that situation and you will make it. And you'll be able to say, yes, do it. Then that thing is what will now propel you to start talking. Please don't give up this. Some people say stand in front of the mirror, rehearse, rehearse. It's not all the time that that works. So. Because you may want to go to a place that they tell you, ah, the people that are coming are chief executive. And you look at yourself and you say, small me, talk to the, ah, no. But once you don't want to match them at their level, you will get there. So communicate to connect. Quiet confidence. Not go there and start squaring shoulder. Because I've been to some training programs. Instead of the resource person to be talking about what we were there for. Then you see, I have uh, three master degrees and uh, I've already uh, finished my PhD. I've registered for another one. What's it concerned? Concerned uh, Aguero with uh, overload or something, whatever they say. So please, whatever you, the way you say it and manage them, will show them that you're a person of integrity, you have confidence, you have a signature style that will make people to listen and learn to be a leader. It's a skill that can be learned. Let me quickly go to our uh, our question uh, chat room. There is nothing there. Somebody is just greeting us. No, no question there. Okay, okay. so let's let's move on. So learn to be a leader, and you will get there. So these are the three pillars of executive presence in managing yourself. One, how you act. Two, how you communicate, and your and your appearance for crying out loud. Some of us executives just say, uh, not, you don't dress. It's better, my friends will always say, it's better to overdress than be shabby. And I always tell some of my colleagues and associates in those days, they'll say, please dress properly well, because you never can say, they'll say, oh, go and represent me somewhere. And what would you do? Would you want to run from the island to, main, to, to Ikeja to come and change? No. What do you need to do? In terms of your appearance, be prepared like the scout. How you look. I'll give you an example. When I was in service, one of my uh, associates came to the office on that day on the Good Friday like that. He just came and said, he was wearing somebody like, uh, you know, this uh, this dress that is opened here and the uh, truck pusher type of this thing. And he had this cap with the ears. He said, 
So unfortunately for him, I was just driving him when he was walking in. I just stopped. I said, my friend, thank God it's Friday. He said, yes, ma, yes, ma. <laughs> thank God it's Friday. I said, then, where are we going? He said, I, 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 I'm at work, ma. Dress down Friday. I said, yes, dress down Friday. This is not appropriate. You are dressing like somebody or you are dressed like somebody that is going for Panwine Tapas Club or you are going to the beach. Go home. He said, eh? Excuse me. Home is Aja after Aja. Uh, on the way to that time, uh, the lucky area was not fully home. He said, after Aja. I said, go home and you report to me. When you I said, hey. So I don't know how he made it. So when he saw that I was serious, you now went to one of the security guys because I want to change from his uh, mufti to the uniform. So because it was later I heard that that was what he did. So he now quickly collected the mufti and changed. And he came and said, I'm back, ma. I said, very good. This is better because you could be sent to the somewhere. And is this how you appear to represent us? No way. He said, so later, so maybe the following week, I now heard what he did. So people started laughing. So since that time, people now know that you should be ready and you don't have to say, ah, my dress, it is stretched now. No. If you know that the time that Nepal will bring light in your area, please be prepared. Be decent. Okay? Don't be caught on our ways. So let's quickly look at the eight traits of executive presence. See that? Let some of them stick. Stick. Confidence. Charisma. Trustworthiness. Trust is something that you can you don't play with it goes beyond trust it shows it like uh, 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 loyalty you loyal okay relatability don't just sit on that high horse and just say talk to people as if just and they'll be looking at you and say speak on your servants are listening relate as an executive, your composure, you should be transparent, you should be authentic in whatever you're doing, concise. Don't let it be that once you speak, people will go and look for dictionary. Eh? Speak simple. See, uh, that was what I was taught when we were in the, in the university. They said, the simpler, the better. Because you need to give somebody the opportunity to do what you have said. That's you leaving something with them. Concise. And your style should be that. Are you always punctual? Are you always ever ready? Are you always others of what you have mentioned? People, that would not be your signature tune. That would be your style. So that shows leaders who command respect in different ways. And executive leaders, uh, leaders we all will all command respect. We all command respect in different ways. An executive president is much the same way. While executive president is a skill that can be learned, there are certain traits that are undoubtedly be of help. So look at some of these ones. What are those ones that you feel they are talking to me here and I need to change? Look at it. So let's look at this. Why is executive president so important? Important, of course. It's, it's it plays a major role in our success in the workplace. It shows that you're emotionally intelligent and it will also define you as a brand. Brand that, yes, something, everything about you, everything about you that you in, impact on people's life, personal fulfillment, and it will take you higher. We have seen situations where this executive president is what the only thing that will stand you out. It happened to me. When we had uh, the promotion exam for directors, something like this was what got me out of the others. There were 22 of us. And yours sincerely came out standing clear. Standing clear. It's just something. So I, I tell you, when I now went for the physical interview, those who came from the ministry, they said, Madam, are you not this? I said, yes. He said, just, well, we need to ask you a question. He said, that, that thing, Nigeria Mapo, the, the river Benue and uh, Niger. They said the center place. Where is it? I said it's in Kogi State. I said what is that? The place called I said Confluence State. They say take a bow and go. But others they drill them, okay. But something must stand you out, and that one of them is 
executive presence. Because when you are able to wrap all this around you, emotional intelligence, talking well, doing that and all, they will not just say, Mwah. take a bow and go. So what you need to do is what? You have to take up those roles that make you to function as a leader. Because your presence itself means how effective you are as a leader. Leave presence is inferred on you because immediately they see you now say, Oh, Dr. Fellow, fellow of CIH, CIHRM. You say, Ah, I doff my hat. And the first thing that will come out is say, eh? Eh? Please don't go out today and disgrace us. Because they're looking highly, highly and up there about you. So people are already concluding when they say you have a doctoral fellow and you have or you are a fellow of the institute. So they would look at you and say, remember that position will be temporary, ranks and titles are limited, but the way you treat people will always be what they will use in determining who you are. Okay, who, let me see. I have a question. How do we work with an older management staff that always reminds us that he has worked in so many places in the past? To also mention is ego <laughs> egotistic in nature. Such people, they go, they should go for training, that they should look at them. If as you are in HR, those at one when you organize retreat, let somebody come and talk to them. Something will drop in them. Okay, unless they don't have, but just let's say, hmm? so what, what what can this we do about this man? Organize it because if you send him for training, he may go there and still show that bad attitude, or he may not even come back with anything, or he may come back and say, why did you send me to that place? But when you do it in house, you do a retreat, even if it's one day, something will happen. Okay, something will go that. So someone else says. Thank you, my please. How can we get you get the lecture material? A signature style. I said signature style would be that. All other things that people will know you for are your signature style. That ah, don't mind him. That person ah, we'll have to wait for thirty minutes before he gets here. That's what he. That's what he is because he sees himself as the chief big man. He will make us wait and wait and wait. That's his style. I'm the negative one, but. Then if you speak too much English, that's the style. Okay? That's immediately say, ah, don't mind him. Maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's the style. That means there's no time that they get to meet you, that something will not, negative will not strike. So signature style is all the things around you that will define your brand, that will define who you are. That is what we're talking about. So define your personal executive present. Remember we said personal present, Leadership present, then executive present. So you go up that ladder. You need to manage it. So what are those things that will define your personal executive present? Like your signature style. Have a positive mindset. Positive. Don't let everything be. Ah, they said you are bad and that is what you always be. They said you are this, that is what you always be. So that is it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so... That then, then let it not be. Be positive. Be a possibilitarian. Be a positive person. Okay? Consider your habits and your background. There are some people, when you talk to them, they will shout. I say, why are you shouting? I'm not shouting. I got that voice from my father. That's how the, we talk. Don't know. In my family, they call us lion. Ah. And you have to bring that to the workplace. So, Remember, not all your habits and your background will come with you into the workplace. You need to manage. You need to manage and be able to fit in. So redirect your focus. Ask for support if you know something is really wrong. When people start talking about it, see that something is really wrong. So you need to redirect your step to be able to manage your personal executive presence. Ask for support when you need to. Practice your speaking skills. It helps a lot. So what do we need to do? Observe others. Learn from those you hold in high regard. Use your body language well. Okay? Your body language. Because if you stand there, say nothing, do nothing, you're just walking and you're all there. So 
you need to. So join a group. And that's why we are here. Get a coach. That's why you are here. Okay? Because at the end of it all, you, you'll be able to see that when you are joined to our uh, Telegram group, you see so many things, so many questions, so many people out there that will help you out in the course of our job. So manage that well. So exactly, you would not wonder when did they start talking about this personal presence, executive presence. He just came in about 2014, about 10 years ago. Just like emotional intelligence that came in early 2000. Personal presence. If you go online, you see this book. Creating personal presence. If you want to buy, you buy on Amazon. I'm not advertising for them. But if you don't even buy, just go through it. There are some clips there that you can just read and it triggers some things in you. Okay. So personal presence can help you get a date, a mate, a job, and can lead you to meeting people. But if you don't manage it well, it will not show who you are. Okay. So it is not about who you are. It is how you are. How? Okay, do you know who I am? I know. You are the chief executive. Then how are you? How are you? It's very important. It's the way we react, the way we present ourselves that matters. It's not that you, because we are chief executive, we are dumb, dumb, and we are not going to talk when things are not going right. But please, let's manage it well. Once you've made your point, move on. Especially when it comes to safety and security, you see somebody doing ziggy, 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 ziggy in the area of safety and security. And you say, ah, before they say I'm a bad person, phew, call the person there, tell the person, you are not doing it right. Don't drag it on, move on to another thing. You have left a message with that individual. It's very important. So what does it look like? How do we build the capacity or capability to have the executive presence? Now, the future is about nurturing people that will take over from us. When you've done your own, you've shown the, the, your sphere of control or influence, you've not been able to say, it's up to you to carry on. But they have already looked up to you. It's up to them to take some things from you because they see you as a successful leader. Leadership skill is in everyone. We just have to get it out and do it well. Provide an enabling environment for them to be able to ensure that we get it well for flexibility and change. Remember to remind them that there's something that is called change. All of us are not going to be on the same page all the time. I need to move forward and I need to make people to realize that this is for the good of all. So an important aspect of leadership is to look behind or look around you and see who is following you. How many? If they don't follow you at that time, at a point in time, you realize that they will re re remember that you want to lead them well. So in essence, executive presence is the level of your ability to lead a group. It is measured by the likelihood to follow you and your direction and how you are viewed across the team. Because we're going to talk about team working tomorrow and you see how do you manage it. Managing team is a little bit difficult if you don't know how to manage the different characters that are in the team management is something that we need to be able to use and get there. If not, you see yourself doing everything and it's not good, but at times you need to lead by example. So what do we do? What do we do? First, mastering executive presence. You have to trust people. You have to believe in them and let them also believe in you. Two, you need to work within teams so that they be highly productive and loyal. Some of us, at times, you don't want to just go overboard, but it's not all the time. So what do you do? You have to be an inspiration to them. It's not everybody that you carry along. But those who are believing that they are tired, be an inspiration to them. So now let's quickly look at it. You know, the first thing we say there is a trust-based relationship. Trust is not is a universal principle. And when you ask, how do you trust that person? Say, how do I trust him? Oh, no. He's respectful. He's honest. He's fair in his dealings. He's a person of integrity. You see, what is trust to you? Service above self. He's kind. He contributes when he knows that we are, we are not there. So trust has so many prongs here and there. And you need to just get which one will people know me by when I'm an executive. 
we need to manage that. So let's move on. Let's take this story to understand what you mean by trust in relationship, especially in the workplace. Trust is a very important factor for all relationships. When trust is broken, it is the end of the relationship. Lack of trust leads to suspicion. Suspicion generates anger. Anger causes enmity. Enmity may result in separation. Hmm. A telephone operator told me that one day she received a phone call. She answered, public utilities board. There was silence. She repeated, P U B. There was still no answer. When she was going to cut off the line, she heard the lady's voice. Oh, this is P.U.B. Sorry. I got the number from my husband's pocket, but I, I do not know whose number it is. Without mutual trust, just imagine what would have happened to the couple if the telephone operator answered just hello instead of P.U.B. Whether it's a couple or a work team, connected people trust each other. Trust is the glue that holds people together through good times and bad times. So we need to manage trust and integrity. Everything, respect, contribution, okay? Service above self. So before we end, before we end, remember the following. Remember the following. They are like the recap of what we have said. What do we want you to be? When you are a fellow of this institute, when you are a doctoral fellow of this institute, stand out. Be the extraordinary because you are different. You are not, you stand out from the pack. So to make the difference, the difference should be you. What did he say? You are different because you have packaged yourself with a personal presence, leadership presence, executive present that is why you are red hot hot to for you to make the difference the difference should be you so what do we do success is about people success is about what people for you to be successful you need to relate for you to be successful you need to get people around you they are the key to your success everyone who succeeds does so through what relationship with people who will rejoice together we will celebrate together nothing in this world was ever created built produced amassed fostered distributed or utilized without the support of other people you can't do it alone that is why we say team working so you need to know that you need to share power and recognition lead by making others powerful overall so that means in the course of everything at a point in time, you hold everything to your chest. But you start dishing it out that you need to do this, you need to do that. At a point, you do everything. At a point, you want to do most things, but you'll not be able to succeed in all of them. But those ones that you hold close to your heart, so that by the time there is any error, the damage control will be easier to do than for it to have gone out of out of control. Like my 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 South South people will say, you fall my hand. There's nothing I can do anymore. So it's very important. Recognition. Let me see. <clears throat> okay. I want to get the question. If I'm in a new office, let me see. Let me see where we can get. <laughs> I have to show the full face again. Please, can we have the access? Yes, we have the slides. I have a question. How do you work with the boss? Who do not trust his employees and find it difficult to entrust work to them fully, he will end up injuring himself. And that at the point in time, he will realize that the office we are out leaving, he either leaves, if it is public sector, he either leaves after 35 years in service or 60 years of age, depending on which of which of the agencies or whatever. Lawyers, I think, or those in judiciary, sorry, I think they said 70 or so. Those in uh, academia, whether that's 75. But for whatever it is worth, we need to manage them well so that they will know that the best place in the world, the most intelligent place, not person, place in the world is the symmetry. There, all those who refuse to leave something behind are there 
with whatever they knew. So we need to manage them. Don't challenge them. Let them manage. We will see a way of going around it. And in those days, we used to have a program that we call managing your boss. If you know how to manage your boss, you get the best out of him. I give you the story of one, one man and his secretary. In those days when you had the latitude of moving your secretary along with you wherever you go, if you are still within the same environment, you can move. If you have been transferred from Ikeja to Lagos Island, say, I want my secretary. So your secretary will go with it. So one day, one of the secretaries, I happened to have met her. She now said, ah, not me, it happened to me. said, ah. She told me the story that she went to the house of uh, Ogada Chan and she saw the madam. And she said, and she told the madam, say, ah, madam, you they try you, you manage our girl. Well. And the madam now said, madam, you too, you try you, that you have been following Oga all over the place. He said, ah, I know how to manage. Said, so the way you are managing him in the office, I manage him more than the office. That is why we are still together. And both of them laughed. And that is it. Managing your boss, you know. Our time in the office is not too short, but we spend most of our lifetime in the office and we need to manage those people around us. It is said in, even in the native parlance that if you know somebody for his character, you will not quarrel because you know where he's going. You will know your boundary. So does the organization have job description for each staff? Is the organization a private-owned company or government? Is the boss acting... Okay, somebody, somebody is answering, I don't know, whether it's a question or is trying to answer somebody, okay? Is the boss acting on poor team management skills or lack of confidence? Maybe. Thank you for that. Suddenly put uh, uh, the summary of what you put here. The person should answer that and know how do I manage that. To make the, okay. Madam, this lecture is quite interesting. Okay, can we get the soft copy? Sure you will. Good evening, Maka. Please, how do we get managed where your boss is compelling to do otherwise? I don't understand that question very well. Compelling to do otherwise. Great, but it is elaborate. Can we get the soft copy? Yes. What do you do with a boss who has obsessive compulsive disorder? Hey, hey, this one. Go to those who studied. Industrial psychology. Be soft copy you will get. How do you work? Uh, cause with who feels threatened? Oh, that is a bad one. By your abilities and charisma, especially when the people or subordinates seem to one thing that you should not do. By competing with him, make him feel. There are some things that they may be your. Own. May not be able to do it well, but they give him the go ahead, we'll come back to you. Your boss's chair, it is not good. Okay. If you are in a new office and everyone tends to have loved the previous one, yes, uh, of course, it's normal. It's it's natural that you see some people. I can't answer all these questions, or else we will not live here. You see, some people they feel that you like your loyalty is with the other one, so they feel threatened. So they come out front up. Or your girl or whatever and normally it's not like that okay so let's quickly move on and uh, we get to some of these questions tomorrow so what you need to do is that lead by making others powerful okay you may even lead from the bottom like what we have in bottom-up approach we're going to talk about that tomorrow okay so Overall, like my cousin in the White House, the first black man in the White House, my cousin, he says, overall, others must do what trust you, have faith in you, and believe that you are going to lead them to the shore of success. This is the OK Quadrant. The OK Quadrant says, you don't have to be OK with 50-50. OK? If I'm OK with 30, please go ahead with your 70. What we want is that both of us are okay. And that's the, the song of Teddy Pendergrass. It's so good loving somebody and somebody loves you back. If you remember that song, sing it down, 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 down the line. It says 50, 50, 70, 30, 
60 40 if i'm okay with 40 please go with your 60 and that is the quadrant that we want you are okay i am okay that is where we want to land and that is what executive presence should be all about win-win commit to win-win create a winning relationship recognize and reward people we are going to talk about talent a little bit of talent management tomorrow care for your people and they will care about the job care plus respect to make them to stay on and when people say why are you here you say honestly i never knew i would stay 10 years just like me i never was knew that i would stay the number of years i stayed in public service because i said 10 years what's the fine girl like me doing in a place like this i'm out but it was at that 10th year eh? i know these gen z's will not uh, agree with me here because they keep moving and i tell them it was at the 10th year let me follow it sequentially it was at the 10th year that my job started getting interesting and i love it till the end till i left service I know the Gen Z's will not agree with me or the millennia, they may not agree. Please note that when you move, know that the only way up could be out, but manage it well so that you don't throw in the towel when you don't have a support system. I know some people say, ah, no, I just need like five years in public service and I'm out. They are smoking, Gary, no be small. So in order to succeed, in your organization, focus on helping people. People now becomes an acronym, okay? Okay, for professionalism, empathy, optimism, partnering, loyalty, engagement, and empowerment. We are getting to that tomorrow. We're going to talk about engagement and empowerment. How do you become loyal? So if you can, if you feel all those six are too many, collapse into four and use the fish model. And the fish model just say, feel for others. Involve them in whatever you're doing because you can do it alone, okay? Then speak to and see others' point of view. Hear them out. We've been talking about communication. For the rich also cry. The rich also cry. The blood that runs in you runs in them, okay? So we need to manage people well so that they'll be able to deliver. And they'll be able to develop a new mindset. How do you develop a new mindset? Watch them grow or see them go. They will jump out of your organization. They don't have to jump out of the country if you don't retain them, if you don't manage them well. But some will still go even if you manage them well. So what do you need to do? You need to train them, you need to mentor them, you need to counsel them in order for them to stay, in order for you to also close the performance gap. Because
Okay, sorry, I guess uh, it's network, but I'm trying to see if I can reach out. Please, can you all hear me? I guess it's network. Yes, I can hear you from my hand. Okay. Uh, I can hear you. Just that, uh, you I guess it's that? network. Yes, sir. I guess it's network. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, can you hear you. Thank you. We can hear you. We can hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Network. Don't speak. Where you move your mic, you cannot talk, and she will hear you. Others will see her. You are you hearing me? No. You can. Others will be yeah, hearing we you. Can, we can hear, but I don't know. We are still waiting for uh, the lecturer. Hello. And I don't know this program is for how many hours? Please. No, as from the as admin now, as um, our admin, they will tell you. Hello, this is the resource person, please. Okay, ma'am. Can okay, you see me now? Can you see me? I'm sure you can see me. I can see you. Yes, now. we can, can see, see you. Yes. yes. What will happen is that I will try and put my, my video to my slide. If you be able to see that, okay, I'll be uh, maybe if I can. If not, you just listen. We are about four slides away from the end of the program. Did you hear that? We are four yes. slides yes. away. Okay. Yes, so yes, let me talk to the slides. Yes. Let me talk to the slide. Then you'll be able to get it done. Okay. Let me talk Ma, to the slide. We cannot see you. We cannot see you. How, uh, people are seeing you. Yes, we are seeing you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you can see my slides. Can you see my slides? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, good. Let me... Good. That is network. It's beyond my control now. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. Yes, you can see me. Now you can see me. Yeah, you can see my slide. Yes, you can see my slide. Yes, I can see you. Yes. You can see my slide. Yes, and you can hear yes, me. And you can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Cast the slide. What did you say, sir? I can see your slide I can't slide see the slide now. Can we unmute our microphones? We don't know. Can you unmute any slide? Let's mute our mics. I can see the slide. Mean, can you mute everybody, please? Can you mute everybody? We need to I can see the. I can see the slide. I can't see the slide. Maybe from your side, we are seeing, we are hearing, please. So you can see me, you can see my slide now. Don't talk. So if you can see my slide, just just give me a thumbs up. I'm using my phone so that you'll be able, as I change, I have about three slides more to finish. I have three slides more to finish. We've done this before. We've seen this before. Okay. So now, before we go, we, we retain them. We said that. So finally, finally, with your executive presence, okay, you need to know that you talk, 
you should be seen. So what do we want? We need to have us stand up to be seen, talk to be heard, sit to be noticed. All this at the essence of executive presence. Life isn't about what? It's not about finding yourself. Life is about what? Creating yourself and recreating. Okay? So what do you do? This is what J.F. Kennedy, one of the presidents of U.S. said. He said, reinventing oneself requires focusing on what is around you and learning to capture the essence of an observation. So it can be transferred to a new set of skills. So as with our executive presence, you can transfer some of these skills, transfer them, and you'll be able to make an impact on people. It shows what it consists of showing a better way by example. It is now time for a new generation of leadership to cope with new problems and new opportunities. For there's a new world to be won as executive. Remember what they always tell us about what? The one minute elevator, the one minute elevator impression. So in conclusion, when they say you have just one minute to make an impact, one minute to make a difference, what do you do? Imagine yourself meeting Dangote or any of these big men. You're about to enter the same elevator together. I say, who are you? Because it's going to exit at the first step. Within that time that you are in the same environment, you can make a lot of difference. So remember, with as executive, first impression is a lasting impression. You may not have the opportunity to undo that which has been done. So you may not have a second opportunity. All those ones that they always tell you, second chance, there may be no second chance. Make it at that point. Elevator opportunity. So what do we do? It is said that most people that go to jobs nowadays, 70% of them are not work ready. So you ready and be able to get the job done. What do you do? So we have done this, we have done that, and what do you do? So as an executive, we need to manage ourselves very now. What do we do? So, the vital impression, one minute elevation, and quiet to be kind in whatever they do. And you too will be kind for everyone you meet. Is carrying a heavy load, carrying a heavy load. And what do we do to help them get that load off their back? So are you wired to connect? Connect with your people and you'll get the job done for us. In conclusion, are you ready? Ready? Ready to sink, swim, or set yourself up for success? For it is those who are prepared that win the race. And that is the laurel. That is the cup that all of us are going to win. The best way to predict the future is what to invest in it. So let's quickly take this um, video. The video. The video is, is Chinese bamboo tree. Chinese bamboo. And how do we learn from that? So let's quickly get it.
I'm not muted though. I'm not muted. It's from your end. So when you get your when you get your slides, you just make sure you are on to uh the internet. You'll be able to get this um you'll be able to get this Chinese bamboo and it's just it will click on onto the internet. So it's just the network. I don't know what went wrong with my network on my system. So I hope uh, we have been able to make an impact based on this uh, presentation. And uh, tomorrow, whatever questions that you have, please bring it along. That will be physical. We will not be at the mercy of any network. So that is all I have for us this evening. And uh, sorry for the break. It wasn't my doing. I couldn't help it. So we can unmute now. And uh, the host, please unmute them. And let me, let's have a chat for one minute before 10 o'clock. Thank you for listening. Okay. Questions? If you have anything, I don't know why the network bounced me out. So I'm using my phone. To have any questions, let me see who, Whose hand is up here? Um, host, unmute them. Host, unmute them. Host, host. Host, unmute them. It's all stuff now. Okay, what did you say, ma'am? Well, so we can unmute ourselves. So. Yes. Okay, unmute yourself, and if you have I anything. Have